And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Darren Pelly, who during his NDE experienced God's love. Darren, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be on your YouTube channel and uh, talking to your subscribers. Well, we're excited to have you. And if you don't mind, Darren, let's start on the day that this happened and go from there. Okay, great. Well, I was actually 30 years old, about 20, 23 years ago. And I was um, coming home from work and I'm a type one diabetic, just to let everyone know, insulin dependent. And uh, my blood sugar was going low and not really knowing it. When I got home from work, I did 10 hours every day, exhausted. And the last thing I should have done was take a nap. But I was so tired, I went up to the third floor um, and just took a nap. And that's the last thing I kind of remembered about going down into the bed and falling asleep. Somehow my wife ended up getting me out of bed because I, I saw myself in the hallway with her. I was in the hallway with her outside the bedroom on the third floor, and I didn't understand why we were there. And I had no idea what, how we got there. And um, I slowly started being lifted out of my body. I could actually see myself standing up, reaching out to my wife. And I was drifting up and up, higher up into the sailing of the third floor there, into the corner of the hallway, and just looking down and just seeing me standing which was really amazing to, to watch, like a drone lifting off, off the ground from a, a 3D perspective view. It was quite amazing as an out-of-body experience. And I was just lifting up. And then the main key of that story, of that actual event, was that I was still alive. I wasn't on the ground. I wasn't dead. But I was still alive reaching out to her, which to me, um, as I reflected back um, later, I, I could tell people that to me, it seemed to me that God was taking me well before my last breath, which, which made me feel so relieved knowing that if I, if I actually did die after that event, I was already taken before experiencing my last breath, the death moment. And to me, I, I know for a fact that he takes you well before you die and into everlasting life. So from one life to the next, how I reflected upon that after this NDE experience. I um I then lost vision of completely everything uh, of the hallway, and I was I was in this whirlwind, almost like a tornado spinning, like really fast, and it was extremely fast, and it seemed large of a whirlwind inside of it, almost gliding into this whirlwind. And everything was just spinning so fast. And one thing I, I heard that was resonating instantly was the pure pureness of the laughter of an innocent child, like a one or two year old laughter, not like the devious seven, eight, nine, ten year old child laughing. It was pure. The pure laughter resonated throughout. It was actually resonating through me. And it, and it connected in a way with the other events in, in this actual NDE experience, I, I could feel the laughter. I could feel the pureness. It brought me back to when I was a younger child, carefree, you know, but, but right after that, it was more of God's love filling my, com my soul completely. A fullness of his love just drenched every single part of my soul. Like it was, it was so large and so pronounced in in size and so intense there was no pain there was no hurt there was no worries there was no thoughts of my body or back home you know on the third floor there was just the presence of him just exponentially filling me throughout my whole soul and once his love filled my whole soul it was so intense like exponentially intense in size that I was getting the, the simplicity of his love, almost like the pureness and simplicity of the laughter of the child. It kind of connected in a way, but the intensity was so large of his love. But it was, it was simple. It was so, so simple. And instantly, once it was in throughout me, 
his love, I was basically saying to myself, man, I got it all wrong. I was doing it all wrong, all wrong from that feeling of how simple and how pure and how intoxicating his love was just for me throughout my soul. It was truly amazing to experience it and to the point where it was, it was, we were still spinning through this tunnel and I'm saturated through his love. I, I could come to a point where I'm coming to a, to like a question and I forget what the question was, but it was, it was a question that I had and he instantly, before I even asked the question in my, in my soul or in my mind of my soul, he would answer it automatically throughout my soul. The answer would rush through me throughout my soul telepathically instantly before a split millisecond of asking that question. He already knew the question. He already answered that question. And I was blown away. I, I, I was just totally shocked at, oh my gosh, he's that much, that much intact in me and my soul. And it was so, so powerful. Um, his power, the Lord's power was so magnificent, even to the factor of his love. It was so even more grand than that. It was, it was so, so amazing in size of his power. It, none of the English words, and none of them, the English language is far, far way too simplistic to even define it. It's undescribable. It's unmeasurable. Um, it's just impossible to tell you how grand it is. And it only for you. That's it's saturated throughout the soul. So I, I try to write about how if any of you had a love experience in your life and you felt passion and love in your heart from a hug from a grandmother or a, a love moment with a, a significant other, and you take that particular massive amount of love that you felt, if you put if you multiply that by a factor of like 10,000 or 100,000, none of us on this earth could ever experience an intensity that massive. And you take that factor and you put it into every cell and molecule of your body and your soul. And that's what God's love is like for you. That's what it feels like. It's so incredible. It's unbelievable. And, and he was just there answering this question instantly without even me asking. And from, from there, I went into what we, people would call even a life reveal. Now, I'm 30 years old, so my life reveal, I would think, would be short. But his love is so saturating in my soul and so grand. He's letting me feel all my life events. Like, they're going by by milliseconds, like a projection of um, video. But they're flickering all through my soul. And he's letting me feel all the all the all the nasty thoughts I've had, because he knows every thought. He knows every word. He's shown me every interaction with all. He's showing me the terrible times that I was, the great times that I was. He's letting me feel it in my soul. He's letting me see. He's letting me see people that I'm talking to and how I affect them. And, and he give me that glimpse of that that feeling through my soul, but most of his love is like hugging me in a background and encapsulating in me. All of his love is still there as he's letting me, is showing me how I was, but him in the background was so intense. I knew he was there, but he's just saying, let me show you son what you did, you know? And it was, it wasn't, it wasn't long either because it was milliseconds of every single word and thought in interaction of, of my life. And it was so amazing to be able to see that and to know instantly once he was within me, the Lord himself and in, in his encapsulating his love, the simplicity of it was already going through. And even in the background, his simple pureness of his love was littered throughout my soul as he was showing me all the things that I was doing throughout my life and bringing me back to his love, how he is, how he wants us to be, you know? And it was, it was so, so amazing. 
I mean, the love is just so large. It was insane to, I mean, I can't even, it's very difficult to describe. It's so massive. And so after, after that particular, um, we call it a life reveal or uh, your life moments, you know, I was, I was able to see the a brightness of white, um, large, large white brightness, pure, pure white, like the purest white you could possibly ever see. And even that on earth through our own eyes, it was nothing in comparison. It was, had, it was so much brighter and so much pure pureness and it was saturating whiteness and it was it was basically i could see the this this whiteness come at me and i could see in the peripherals i can see the 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 whirlwind that i'm in in the corners and i'm kind of looking upwards you're looking up and um almost at like a knee position and i could i could see this robe this white huge robe come at me and i'm looking up and i'm looking at the face and and I could feel it's Christ alone. And I can I'm looking at his face. I want to see his face. So I'm looking up and it's the strong light, light. It's like a light. It's like a yellowish whitish light coming at me. And I and it's blinding. It's almost like looking at the sun and you're trying to look at the sun and it's it's almost you just can't see it because it's so bright. And I can I could grab on a on a just a quick peek barely seeing the face i could see the jawline and his, and his eyebrow slight part of his eyebrow but i could feel i could feel the love of him throughout my soul and and it was it was just remarkable there was no exchange in words there though either but i could see the sight of christ right up to me it was almost like he was like a foot in front of me or two feet in front of me and i was looking up at his face and it was weird because i was such at a low level I could feel myself looking up at and wanting to see his face. And I was talking to a priest afterwards um, and, and was telling him this story. And he, and he said, the reason you didn't get to see Christ's face is because you, you weren't, you weren't, you were to come back. You weren't to stay. I, I so much wanted to stay. I didn't want to come back. I wanted to see his face. I wanted to have a full conversation with him. I wanted to stay. It was so remarkable. And the, 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 after that, it was just me coming back into my body, which was, the, this part of it was even more remarkable. I'm coming back in spirit, and I could feel myself reciting the Our Father. I could feel it in my soul, reciting the, the Our Father prayer. And as I'm coming back into my body, I'm the... The EMTs have me up on a on a stretcher in a seat, and I'm up, up high because they're lifting me up uh, over the the railings of the of the stairway to get me up and over into the stairway. So I'm up really really high up in on the, on the stretcher, and I'm reciting the Our Father. And as I'm coming back to my body, I'm not 100% conscious yet, and I'm I'm babbling and reciting the Our Father, and I can feel it through my soul. And to the point where I could feel every single word, every meaning of it, every single sentence in depth meaning enriched in my body, enriched in my soul, as they're carrying me up over the banister and down the stairway, all the way down from the third floor. And I must have recited that, chanting it all the way down at least 20, 30, 40 times, just chanting it and absorbing the word absorbing the sentence in fullness it was remarkable amazing to this day i i still recite the our father in my daily prayers and i know the intensity of those of those words it brings me back to that the fullness of that prayer which i got to receive in spirit and in body through this nde it was glorious just truly glorious it was so so shocking to feel the words of the prayer within your soul and i was i was back um back in my body i was down into the ambulance and they they usually inject a dextrose into diabetics they're in comas to get them out 
uh, instant sugar that gets into your full body and bloodstream to the point where 15, 20 minutes later, you the, a person in a diabetic coma could be literally talking like I am now. And um, that that was that was my event of of a near death experience. And I've had many other diabetic what we call is their insulin reactions or comas when I was in you know my my young teens in my early twenties. And I never got to get to that level of an NDE, but always in those comas that I was in. And, and when I was younger, they were always to a feeling of peace, no hurt, and, and, and love. I was always in an unbelievable state while I was unconscious. And I could see a, a white, I was in this white realm of a light, all every single coma that I was in, to the point where coming out of them, I was combative because I didn't want to leave that, that state that I was in because it was so peaceful. And once I felt the love of God rush through my soul, it um it linked, it linked every single reaction that I had that I was unconscious. It, it I knew where I was in every single one. I was in the arms of God, encapsulated in His love, and it linked every single one of all those other comas I had when I was in my late teens into my early twenties. Um. And that, that to me was extremely powerful when I came out of that ND when I was 30, it encapsulated all the earlier ones of where I actually was, but not to the extent of the defined moment when I was, I was 30, when this NDE happened, it was, um, it was not only liberating, but it was joyous. It was amazing to, to know. Finally, because I didn't know earlier on where I was. I knew I was combative trying to stay in that state. And I think if any of you have ever experienced something like this, you would be saying the same thing. It's very hard to understand that when people are in NDEs and they might have children and stuff and they're not worried about it. But when the love of God is throughout your soul, it's a whole different ball game. It's undescribable, but I hope I... I did it as justice for you in, in explaining it because to me it was it was remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Darren, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Even though you saw Jesus and you felt God's love, do you think that it matters to God if you're religious or not? You know, that's that's the one thing I, I try to tell everyone. I, I don't think it matters. Me being my faith, it it doesn't come up when you're with God. You know, what comes up is your life and life reveal, the way you were. Comes up is that he loves you no matter what. I, I don't think it matters if you're a Jewish, if you're a Muslim, if you're a non-practicing faith individual. If you're a Christian, Protestant, it didn't. It doesn't matter, you know. In, in God's eyes, He's trying to connect with you, no matter what you are on this earth, in a in a faith based system or not. You you just don't know it. Some of you don't know it, and some of you who do, you're blessed. You're truly blessed if some of you are connected in in the strong ways of connecting with God. And being able to understand to love love somebody, love the neighbor, love your friends, care about people. And God helps you with that. So to me, religion doesn't come up. It didn't it it doesn't come up in, in God's eyes in, in in being with him. I hope I hope that I hope that helps many of you that are listening. You know, I'm not trying to say reject your religion. I believe religion is great. It's a vehicle to God, right? It gets you to be closer to him. Um, if you can do that on your own, that's amazing, you know, um, without having to be in a type of religion. But to me, my, my religion brings me, it's a, to me, it's a vehicle to go to church every Sunday or Saturday or every day, it's a vehicle to become closer to Christ 
in my religion. It's a huge vehicle um, to pray every day, you know, but to me, it doesn't make it, it to, to God. I'm not too sure, Jeff, to me, it, it never came up in this NDE. And I, I think other NDEs would probably say the exact same thing. Can you tell us what happened to your body from your wife's point of view? Um, my body collapsed to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> it collapsed and I was on the ground. So when you go into a diabetic reaction and your blood sugar go, your blood sugar is supposed to be at 100, 120 blood sugar. Your blood sugar is below 20 when you're in a coma. It's there's no sugar in your in your brain and your body's trying to keep your brain alive. And it's extracting sugar to keep it alive and keep your organs alive. Your body goes cold, it goes gray, you start a death gargle, you're at imminent danger of things shutting down until you can get more sugar into you. There is a backup reserve in your liver that does kick in. But if you're a diabetic that has several reactions within weeks on weeks, that there's no more reserves in your liver. And you're you're basically you're basically gonna probably die if you don't have someone that can bring sugar to you, whether it be in a liquid form or putting it in your gums. Gray, sweating, the body is full of sweat. I wake up in low blood sugar reactions, uh, clothes are soaking wet and sweat from the body trying to survive. Um, gums, uh, tongues are, are chewed apart in in this um, reaction. Um, mom, my mom heard death gargles on several of them when I was younger in my teens and um, had to had to put um, a shot in me of, of basically it's a sugar solution shot um, to get me out. It's not a pretty sight. Um, it could be convulsive. It could be going into a, like a seizure as well, um, almost like someone that that's in an epileptic seizure. I I've I truly haven't really looked at it, and I've heard many times it's not pretty at all. Mm -hmm. And basically, the body trying to survive with its own resources. When you and stay alive, yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry. When you heard that child's voice that sounded so pure, whose voice do you think that was? I don't know. I think it was symbolic in some way. And the reason I say this is that when I heard the laughter of children, and it wasn't just one child, it was multiple children. So it was more of an intensity of pureness and simplicity of a child, of an innocent child, where they're not of age to to lie because their brain's not developed at that point in time. It's that innocence. And I think it was, I, I actually think it was God's message in a way. And and I I didn't I, I have a lot of scripture in, in, a, in a book that I wrote that that kind of simulates or kind of acknowledges certain moments of my experiences. And to me, when I when I go back and I look at like for instance, when I once I came out of this NDE, the, the next week I was looking up whirlwind in the Bible. I needed some confirmation. And there is episodes of the death, I think, of Elijah that's that's encapsulated in a whirlwind. I was in tears reading sections of the Bible that correlated to whirlwind because I thought it was just me and I was scared. I didn't know what that was. And I was shocked to read that. And the same in Scripture where Christ is talking to the disciples they're all arguing about who's going to be at the right hand of christ and they said i want to be at the right hand of christ in heaven and they're all arguing who's better than who and then jesus basically said to them listen all you all you guys listen listen up until you all can be like a child in your life pure simple kind innocent and thinking that way in life none of you enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's what he says in scripture. And to me, that's the way I think essentially God was trying to tell me this was the way to try to be simplistic and kind and pure to the best of our abilities, of course. And and then his love, his simplistic love just just 
compounded on top of that. It was almost like a layer of information that resonated with all. After your remark, it was, it was, it was really amazing. It's really amazing to go through that. After your NDE, did you notice that you had any new abilities that you didn't have prior that could be considered psychic? So I could tell you this. I know there were things after my NDE that have developed more enhancedly than prior. So I have a lot of, um, I, I, I was like praying to God when I was younger and praying to God in my 20s in, in major milestones in life, out of anger, out of whatever. But I always had a sense of knowledge within my heart and my mind. And I didn't recognize it earlier on, but I recognized it prior to this NDE. I recognized things that happens after after praying, even in anger. <laughs> you know, but I, I they're, they're, to me, they're the signs, right? And so as coming out of that NDE and, and learning more about every, every section of the NDE, I started looking at, man, my past experiences. And so I started, started being more involved in prayer and connection with God and being more involved with um, teaching and knowing what I know. And in doing so, that enhanced my ability and my knowledge of God and of the connection with him. And from that, we all have the ability to pray and connect with God in what I would say the gifts that the God that the Lord gives you in the gifts of knowledge is really, really strong that I know. I can pray and I can I can feel God's love in me at times in prayer. Not all the time, but I can there are times I can I can pray for someone passionately and know about God's involvement in their situation because of his love that resonates inside of me in prayer. So though that, that has enhanced a bit at, after the NDE, but it's, it's not necessarily because of the NDE. It's, it is in a way for me reflecting on the things and knowing the things, but me getting involved in, in the prayer steps that I take along with wanting to, to, to teach other people about my experience and about God's love in heaven and about what I've just described. So I, I, I've been heavily involved in, in, in my church. Um, I teach uh, youth ministry, um, catechism, 10th grade, 9th grade, 5th grade, 7th grade, all the way up um, as a substitute, but mainly classes for 10th and 9th grade is they're in their final years to help them in that in that prayer moment of connecting with God. And, and, and to me, you bring on that, that word psychic. And to me, it's, I wouldn't, I, I think everyone has that ability to reach God and have him reach into you in prayer and, and, and have him literally either, some people have the gifts of, of God's word coming into their mind and hear his voice. Some people have the gifts of just the knowledge of his love that makes you feel a word or an action. I write this extensively in my book in chapter six on how I pray and what has happened in these prayer sections of when I'm praying and, and how to start and how it feels and what has happened in every single prayer phase of, of what I do on a daily or every other day basis. And to me, it's it's not because I was in an NDE. It's it's because I I focused on prayer after my NDE, you know, and I I got more connected with with God. And once you get to that level, your life will change exponentially. I mean, it's amazing. My days are unbelievable. And it's not because of my age. I mean, if I wish I knew all of this when I was twelve, and I really paid attention. Your lives would be amazing. I mean, amazing. The the gifts that the Lord gives you and his love and your passion to be and help people automatically happens. You know, he, he puts his love in you in prayer. He, he, he clears your mind and your heart from your burdens and your worries in prayer. And you're enlightened, light, you're enlightened slightly to a level where you're, you're, you're happier as an individual. And if you're happier, I don't care what anyone says, if you're happier because the Lord helps you in prayer, 
you're happier to other people during your day. The one thing I learned is the simplistic love of God is us alone in simplistic interactions. Just the smile on my face to someone else and looking into their eyes and knowing that affected them. That's, that's Christ alone. That's the Lord himself alone through me, emulating his love because he brought that upon me through the connection of him with, in prayer. So psychic is, is a word, but it's, it's, I guess you could say that God gives you knowledge of others. God gives you information in your heart uh, if you're praying for somebody and he's, he's with that person. He's intervening. And he says, he says to my heart, don't worry, son, I, I have this for this person. It's that type of feeling that you know he's with that person when you're praying for that person. And, and everyone has this ability, Jeff. They just don't know it. I'm sure there are people out there that say that they pray, but their prayers go unanswered. Absolutely. Why is that? You know, it's a, it's a very good question. You know, it's, you know, sometimes um, I, I heard this in a, in, a, um, in, a, in a video that I watched about this, this gentleman that has a young son. And his young son is like two, three years old, and they're at the dinner table. And the young son's banging on the table in his high chair, and he wants something from the dad. And the dad's eating grapes at the dinner table. And so he gives the son a grape, and, and the son throws the grape on the floor. And the son's pointing at him, you know, and his dad has a steak knife and a fork. And the son wants, the, the two-year-old son wants the knife. And the father says, no, you know, I'm not going to give my two-year-old a knife. You know, and, and, and it's probably the same thing with God. I mean, there's a reason some prayers are not answered because it, it's probably not in your, and it's not, it's not, it's not the time to give you that answer or hand you that knife that you'll do hurt to you. And sometimes I, I even tell uh, students in my classes, if you never got an answer, I, it could be painful, but it might be just as painful if you got the answer. I've, I've gotten answers that were extremely painful, extremely painful, but I could handle them. Um, I got an answers that I, I wanted certain family members to live, and I knew the Lord was going to take them home. And it was extremely painful to feel that through God. But I asked him to give me the grace and glory of a moment left on this earth for their lives that I could spend with them, which he's granted me. So you, you take what's the best you can do. Um, I also tell my students that, you know, if there's a, you know, if you don't get an answer, there's a reason, but you get to ask him in heaven, you know, you get to ask him that in heaven. I, I, it probably is not the best answer you might not hear because I know a lot of people are headstrong in prayer and it's always an ask, you know, and, um, the way I pray is more of a glorification of a thanks. And then an example of something that I've done bad or good and describing that and asking for the Lord's help or his love that was profound in, in what I've done. Uh, there's, there's a lot of phases in my prayer process that, that simulates a, a book that I read on a prayer process a while ago. I was already doing some of the processes. It's almost a Jesuit style prayer process as well. A priest of mine read my book, and he was telling me that you're already in like a Jesuit style of prayer. It's it's pretty amazing, and I never got taught that. It's just I I ended up coming into that way of praying and connecting with God. Have the memories of your NDE faded over time? Absolutely not. I mean, it's very hard. It's very it's extremely hard to to forget something that was um, so immense full and, and it's so amazing um it, even even the fullness of god in your prayer when you when you reach that level when you can feel god in your heart in your in your mind you will break down you literally break down from his glory and you remember that to an extent like i remember my ndes 20 years ago i'm describing it just like it happened yesterday but in prayer, too, once you reach God's knowledge and maybe his voice or his, is the feeling of his love in you during your prayer time with him, you'll be 
on a different level. And you remember that, and then you'll be, you'll be going back to it automatically to him because your days are going to be different in loving and caring. So you're, you're going to have crazy days. But uh, I, I remembered so much of the NDE that it's almost etched in my brain. I really can't forget it. And, um, you know, people go through traumatic events in their lives, and it's always there. And I wouldn't say it's a traumatic event, but it, it was, you know, it was traumatic in my soul, you know, and so I, you just can't forget it. I mean, I wrote this, this book, you know, 23 years afterwards, you know, and ha help, had to have someone help me write this book because I'm not a writer, I'm an engineer. I couldn't write a, a full paragraph if my life depended on it. So um, it took me at least a year and a half, almost two years, just to get everything down to the way that I'm talking now. What is the title of your book? It, it, my, the name of the book is called One with God. And it's, it's so symbolic because that's where you are. That's where all your family members are. You know, in other NDEs, they, you hear about people talking with their loved ones and around their loved ones and stuff too. But you have God soaked throughout your whole soul. You know, it's so incredible. And uh, I write that book. I write um, basically the storyline of what I talked about. I write about the angry prayers and the other prayers prior, um, some of my life experiences, other stories that I've read about and talked and, and, and influenced me, uh, other books that influenced me in adding to the way I used to pray and adding a couple steps in that process of praying. Um, so, and it changes too, you know, you, you're going to end up, um, modifying your, the way that you're communicating, having a conversation in prayer. Trust me, it, it, it will change for the better. The, the more you, you end up praying and finding a quiet place to be in and, and getting rid of all your worries and your cares and thoughts and opening up your heart, opening up your mind and having a pure conversation with the Lord. If people want to find out more about your book, do they go to Amazon or your website? Yeah, both. Um, so my book's been just, I'm a, I'm a self-published. I don't have a publisher. Um, I end up doing it myself. So I, I put it on Amazon, um, One With God. I also have, I, I started a website as well when the book came out. It's called one www.onewithgodbook.com. And it's basically a profile of me uh, about my book, about my experience. And it has a prayer request there too. I have a button you can press. So if you're having issues in life, you have any requests, you, you want to talk to me, um, you can just click on that button. And, and whatever you ask, I, I you normally try to respond. I'm not technologically sound. So Jeff, I just recently put, um, I linked, the uh, prayer request section on my phone in an app so I can automatically see if someone came in and, and has a request I can type on it and I can try to type back a response to them. I'm getting requests around the world. It's, it's so amazing to be able to help people and at least help them in, in their grief and their sorrows, but also in, in the knowledge of what I expressed here on your, your wonderful channel. To your, to your subscribers and your followers. You know, to me, it would be a waste not to share so much that I know because you'd want everyone to benefit and have an amazing life. And a short, it's a short life. Trust me, it is a short, short life we live in comparison of where we're going to be with God. It's astonishingly short. Um, and to me, if you can live happier during this short life instead of misery. Um, I would love that for anyone. If you had a friend that was grieving over the loss of a loved one, what type of advice would you give? Well, I, I would give them the knowledge of God's love and where they're at. And, and they're one with God and, and the peace that they're at. I would also give them the knowledge knowing that if they ever experienced the last moments of their, of the loved one's death, that, you know, the Lord would, would take you prior to your last breath, 
You know, people fear uh, death moments. They fear that. I, I would fear the suffering months ahead if you had long-term suffering and hopefully hospitalization with good medication to help along. But in the moments up to dying, it could be a day, it could be 25 minutes, 30 minutes, the last moments in your last breaths, you're never, ever going to fail. The Lord God, Heavenly Father, never wants you to fail the last moments of breathtaking and death. He wants to take you from one life to everlasting life and the love of him. And I, I, I say that to so many people. I just had my best friend die yesterday. It was, it was um, immense to know that he passed after his surgery in, in post-op. And it was, it was difficult, but I walked out into my, Jeff, my field, and I, I walked around a bit, and, and I got into this, this major prayer and, and talking with God. And I even did that be, while I was in recovery. And I knew the Lord was going to take him, unfortunately. And, um, and I just asked for his grace and his love to encapsulate my friend, you know, and bring him to heaven with him. And, and you, you, get, you get signs throughout your whole life. I, I would tell someone that's suffering in grief, you get signs all the time from God, uh, dreams of your loved ones, um, signs of your loved ones, because they're one with God. What people don't understand is God is always with you, and so are all your relatives, all the saints. The love of everyone is within God. And so when you get to see signs, People often say, well, that's my Uncle Joe or my Uncle Bob or my Aunt Susie, and that's my dad, and that's my mom. And you know what's ironic about that? Well, not ironic. What's true about that is they're absolutely right. They're absolutely right. God's given them a sign in their wholeness, oneness with the Lord, and maybe them as a sign to them, I feel, um, for what I know, you know, and I see signs all the time. So uh, someone in grief, I would wholeheartedly love to speak to them in the way that I'm speaking to you now, of course, and helping them. And even in prayer, I would I would help them in prayer and, and try to feel the Lord's love within them. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Yeah, Are no you, problem. How can they do that? They can, they can go on my website, uh, onewithgodbook.com. And in the, there's a prayer request. You can, you you don't necessarily have to ask me for a prayer. You can ask me a question, and I will I will answer it. You know, the more and more I I get to reach out to people, um, I I think that relieves a lot of stress in your lives, and in other people's lives that you interact with. So the more the more at ease you'll be, in understanding. I, I even teach you how to pray. You know, it, it it's it's really true that no one really got ever gets to be taught how to pray, how to connect with God. I mean, I don't remember in my entire life ever being taught the way that I learned how to pray to God and connect with him and feel his love and break down from the gloriness of him. It's so amazing. And then you're enlightened and lifted automatically, affecting other people. It's a ripple effect, everyone. Of, of love, of simplistic love, though. And you're not going out every day saying, I'm going to march on and be the best person I can be without God's grace being in with you automatically, where you're not even tiredly trying to be nice. Where that level of enlightenment you can be, it automatically happens. Your life changes. You see signs. You see things in others. And you see you see the grace of God in others very easily. It's a it's an amazing type of life to to lead in through his love, but also to be in and witness. But you also get to see the evil in others more more than not. And you'll notice that um having being enriched in God's love. But it's not it's not a terrible thing. You I have pity for those that have no connection, they're living in their own skin. And I pray for them as I just sit and watch and hear them in a group conversation. Just they, 
they know not what they do. They're doing it for their own. Darren, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Sure. Well, the, the positive message is God's love is simple. It flows through all of us, whether you realize it or not. He's trying to knock at the door of you. You just need to recognize it and open up, and your life will change so simplistically at times. And your you'll your days will be remarkable. And this, it's not a hundred percent guaranteed that all through the day will be remarkable, but slowly it gets better and better and better. Your life will change. I, I say to a lot of people, I'm not the special one. And 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 you know, it's not it's not about me. I'm not the special one. You're the special one. You just don't know it. You just, you know, you've never been taught or you never learned or you never had such a connection and you're tired and wearisome through life. I'm not tired and wearisome. I'm glorified to be having a next breath to experience interactions with other people every day. I might be tired by the end of a workday standing up all day long. And I always go back to God to help me. Especially, I don't want to come home tired and angry at my loved ones. So I, I try to stay connected as best as you can. It's a tough world we're living in. It could be a lot more loving simplistically through the love of God, one with him. Darren, thank you for your message, and thank, thank you. you for being my guest. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.